Hello and welcome once again to yet another episode here on Life Signatures Radio. We are in the middle of a series and in this series we're talking about productivity and God. You know, when you talk about God, people normally think about spirituality alone. They think about hell, heaven. They think about salvation. They think about prayer. They think about fasting. Let me tell you something. You'll be shocked that God is looking far beyond those things to your productivity. In fact, God qualifies people by their productivity and not just by their spirituality. Why would you be spiritual in the first place? For what purpose is your spirituality if it's not for you to be productive? That's why God formed you and placed you for a reason and for a purpose. And he needs you and I to be productive. I can tell you this. I've said this a gazillion times. There is giving God glory when you're being productive. The guy who is Inventing the tarmac, inventing the fonts. I do think that they give God glory more than the person who is just lifting her, her up hands and worshipping. You know, b- before you started worshipping God, w- did he need his worship? Did he need your worship? He didn't. He needed our productivity. That's why he formed us. Let us dive deeper into this in this episode today. <laughs> Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Life Signatures episodes are brought to you by AfricanBooks.com, which is an online ebook platform that seeks to broadcast the African Christian voice to the world. As such, they have become a hub for African content, connecting African writers and publishers with a global reading audience. Publishing your books on their site is free and easy, with authors having full control over their content and the price they choose to sell at it. I was personally blown away by the concept that AfricanBooks.com is coming up with. Things like... No content from their site or their app is going to be run on laptops so that people can easily copy. In other words, your content as a writer is restricted from digital multiplication or digital copying. So you remain intact with your information. And that concept that I got so blown away with was the fact that in some time to come, in due course, AfricanBooks.com will be starting to announce African Writer of the Year. In other words, there will be competitions in all African countries to figure out who is the best published author. And I also fell in love with the fact that countries can actually compete against each other. You can have African authors going at it after each other. And your book as an author will be reviewed and have some stars and recommended upon that particular platform. The thing is that it's an answer to Amazon.com. You know, with Amazon, what happens? You've got to have an account in the Americas or whatever, or in Europe before you can get paid as an author. But here, the local currency is in play and the local means of getting paid are in play. So to get started, go to AfricanBooks.com as an author or as a publisher and even as a reader if you wanted to read your African favorite authors. Enjoy. Again, it's an announcement that I'm making. I am so elated that uh, my book, Empowered, 
My very first work of fiction is available on africanbooks.com and the book is written geared towards inspiring, equipping and enabling the people who are coming out of school so that they can be able to know how to transition into this life. Some of us, we never received this kind of mentoring, this kind of transition and so we groped around in the dark of this world uh, trying to fend for ourselves and trying to make sense of this world and by the time we were raising our heads 10 years 15 years later we had lost quite a lot of time and uh, so i wrote that book so that it can be able to help other people so that they cannot be lost the way i was it's my work of fiction and i really love it go to africanbooks.com look for lawrence namale and uh, get that book in your own currency you will be blessed in the same spirit i'm talking about in this series we're talking about why productivity is the greatest qualifier in god's kingdom and we already laid some groundwork and uh, want us to get deeper into this yesterday we saw why god is so particular about productivity and let us just continue with those thoughts and i believe that For purpose to be fulfilled, one has to live a life of productivity. He goes without saying, because God doesn't create anybody without purpose. Doesn't create anything without purpose. There is nothing that is useless. And for that purpose to be fulfilled, purpose has got to be fulfilled through productivity. And of course, purpose ought to come first so that the productivity is put into focus and into context. Stephen R. Covey normally tells us that you don't need to you know there is um the futility of climbing the corporate ladder reaching the top only to find that that ladder was leaning on the wrong wall can you call that productivity when you've been doing something that is not effective i mean there's a lot of action taken but it's not effective at the end of the day that is no productivity and sometimes we find ourselves doing a lot of that we find ourselves doing so so many things that are not necessarily in our scope of purpose. Sometimes just to fend for ourselves. But that's not how we were created. We were created to be productive and have identified what I consider to be the 20 biggest pillars of productivity. Mm-hmm. And I want us to talk about each and every one of these pillars. Probably, I don't know how long we're going to take to finish this these ones. But I want to talk about these pillars of productivity because it is one of the most important things for the human. It is to be productive. I want to talk about these 20 pillars of productivity in this series. And today we shall look at uh, a pillar and briefly, maybe subsequent in the subsequent uh, subsequent episodes we're going to look at other pillars probably in some episodes i might be able to tackle two or three pillars as we go along but today you know where i'm gonna start if productivity is the most important thing then the first pillar of productivity guess what it is it is purpose i've already told you god doesn't make a mistake god doesn't make things useless God doesn't make things without use. Either living or non-living, every single thing connects to everything else to serve a grand purpose. So you and I have got to have purpose. And if we are going to be productive human beings, we will need to start with purpose. I shudder to think of what we will be as human beings without purpose. And by the way, it's all over the place. Sometimes when people get to their ages of 18 and they're adults, even when they are still kids, the thing that people are looking for the most is money. You wake up and just looking for money. Why? Because it's a medium of exchange. We exchange, we're doing transactions in this life and we're using money. But you see transactions in this life Fending for ourselves, getting food to eat and a place to sleep, it is not the idea about creation or about being alive. There is a reason behind our being. The reason is our purpose. If you wanted to know that you have purpose, look at how gifted you are different from other people. Look at how passionate you are different from other people look at what things make you cry different from what from from other people look at what things make you 
angry, different from other people. Look at what joy you get when you help some people and some people don't get that kind of a joy. Look at what you are destined to do, things that you are predisposed to do, different from other people. What does it tell you? It tells you that you are unique. Our uniqueness is not for the sake of just being unique. Our uniqueness is for the sake of purpose. So that we can be able to deploy our purpose. So for us to be productive in this world, for us to be any productive as God intended us to be, we need to identify our purpose. We need to find out, hey, wait a minute, one minute here. Why am I here? Why was I born? How come I did not die? in my mama's womb why wasn't i a still born and even when i was born i have gone through very many challenges i was bedridden i was in hospital i survived an accident and i've gone so through through so much sickness and so much disease i've been broke i've been beaten but i'm still here why you are still here because there is a purpose to serve and when you serve that purpose you become productive in serving that particular purpose. That's why you are here. The reason as to why you're here is so that you can be productive. And as already discussed, productivity must be pointed towards something. You don't just do things like we normally wake up in the morning and we're helter-skelter all over this world trying to run around. I don't know what we normally do as human beings. We wake up and we have agendas. We even want 48 hours instead of 24 but when you look at all these agendas that we are running, all these uh, errands that we are running for ourselves and for other people, most of them do, do not have purpose. They lack purpose. Identifying the purpose of work must be the first step of being productive. This work that you are doing, maybe it's your employment, or maybe it's self-employment, or maybe it's uh, whatever volunteerism that you're doing maybe you're interning maybe you're even in school what is the purpose behind what you are doing you start from there once you find the why uh, one of my mentors in prayer is called Dutch Sheets he says that the why of doing something can be a great motivational force it's not a good thing when a kid asks you why should I do it? And you say, because I said so. Telling them the why empowers the productivity. They find the meaning for the meaning for doing it. And when you find meaning in doing whatever it is that you're doing, guess what? You become even much more productive. They cannot pay you enough. Disney said, you know, making people happy. That's why he was that productive. If you look at very many visions of very many companies and big organizations, the why behind what they're doing makes them productive. That's the same thing with you and I. By the way, every one of these big companies, they started with an individual's why. Not as a company. Microsoft did not start as a company. Apple did not start as a company. Google did not start as a, as a company. It started with individuals. These individuals had a why, a compelling why. So that's where you need to, to start. You and I, we need to start from there. Even if I'm employed or self-employed or if I'm, I'm doing my own stuff, I'm, I'm, I'm entrepreneur, why am I doing it? Once you've nailed the why, and for the most part, let me tell you this, for the most part, the why is always going to be in solving a problem or creating something or making a contribution or making an impact the why is always going to be something that solves a problem creates an impact makes a contribution or changes things and makes the world a better place find it before you can start looking for actions that will make you productive if anything lots of time must be put into discovering the purpose before even getting started you must spend some considerable amount of time i give you minimum of eight weeks that's why i teach purpose discovery in eight weeks eight weeks to discover what your purpose is and then once you know what it is the rest is productivity because the first thing you've done is to clarify the why the what 
now productivity is just the how. Someone say that if you know your why, you can overcome almost any how. Tomorrow we're going to look at another pillar for productivity, which we've already mentioned in these episodes. But until then, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.